sun. Elements earth, air, water, fire, star nation and creation. We call on your sacred energies today for healing and support as we transform. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome. Today is a very special day here in a very special reading. We are really facing the darkness in order to transform it with the light. Many of us have been facing the darkest times we've ever seen. That's because we are in the time of the death of the dark ages and the birth of the golden. What happens when we face our mortality? Well, the side effect of life is death, but the side effect of death is life. And when we are looking at our mortality, when we are facing our darkness square in the face, that's our chance to remove all fear and transform. Why is this important? Because many of the most precious pieces of ourselves and humanity have been hidden within the darkness because they've been taken there. They've been taken there by the templates by the suffering, by the pain. But this is our opportunity to take them back. We take back those pieces of ourselves. We face our fears. We face our karmic patterning and we get that sort of clarity. We finally see it in the dark. We get that sort of clarity and we cut ourselves free. And this is a big shift. This is a big change. Because what, what we've been shown, we know there's no going back. And in the underworld, the lower world, we are shown our ancestors, what they've been through. We get closer to that. We get closer to that space. You know, my journey into the underworld, I have gotten to see what my father has gone through. What our people have gone through. What suffering really looks like. Not fearing suffering, but actually existing in it. Seeing my karmic patterns that are connected to my wounds. I plan on leaving the underworld as soon as Mercury goes direct. And as hard as this has been, this has given me the biggest gift of transformation and why we're here to do what we're doing. I've been given some messages and this is a very special reading. Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine are going to be combined today as messages as I've been called to do things a certain way. Now tomorrow is Universal Children's Day. And we are going to get a message from the child. But today, we are going to get our message from the underworld. We know we've been taught to fear this space. We've been taught to fear the darkness. But it's time for us to remember, we have nothing to fear. We are keepers of the light. We are builders of the light. We have transformative powers within us to face this. We're built for this. It's time for us to remember. It's time for us to remember who we are. The upper world. Angels divine helpers, the ancient ones, 
and all varieties of luminous beings populate the upper world. It is the place where you go to retrieve your destiny and find out who you will become. Discover your great potentials and undreamt of possibilities. It is also the place where the spirits of the dead arrive when they complete their journey to the light. Many of us have been touched by the upper world. That's why we're on this journey. And where do we meet up? In the middle world. The middle world is the realm of day-to-day -day reality and the playground of the living. It is the present moment where everything is happening. Yet the middle world is created by the future, not only the past. And it is a mirror of the invisible realms. When things are right in the middle world, heaven and earth support everything. When they are not right, heaven and earth must be brought to order as well. We've taken our journey into the underworld because we know we are in the Ace of Swords reversed. We're in the darkness. And that's been the gift of Mercury going into retrograde. But we're, we're coming back with that sword of clarity. We're coming back with that sword of the light. And that's how we're cutting ourselves free. The essence the lower world holds the hidden treasures of humanity. It is a place of rich and fruitful darkness where we can find the disowned parts of ourselves and the abandoned aspects of our psyches. The lower world is the place of our ancestors where we discover the gifts and lessons from the past. It is the realm of the collective unconscious. Here we can meet our demons and transform them into pure energy, our source of personal power. The invitation. It is time to unearth your hidden treasures. Do not make yourself small in order for others to like or accept you. Bring out the gems and the precious stones that you've kept inside your heart, hidden even from yourself. It is time to honor your past and recast your life as a, hero as a heroic quest. As you journey into the lower world, you will be offered all the gifts of your ancestors, their struggles, the way they hurt, the way they lived, and the way they died will become blessings. The medicine. Are you one of those people who do not like to face the past? Now your past is calling to be acknowledged, to be heard, and to be embraced. The only way to become unstuck is to honor everything that has transpired in your life. Reflect on the lessons learned and move on. If you bear witness to your past and learn its lessons, it will stop haunting you as you embrace its gifts. You will recover a missing part of your soul. And that's what we're doing, guys. We're becoming whole. We're becoming whole in the darkness to connect with the light and ground our heavens on earth in the middle world and make it all right. We're making it right. This is part of our mission. And many of you that join me here to heal, harmonize, and raise the, raise the vibes is because you've been through something so dramatic or a series of traumatic events that have forever transformed your lives. This is some deep darkness, but we were built for this. We're rem we are remembering, we are remembering who we are, why we came here and what it's time to do. Now, I've been showing these cards here. Confirmation right there. 
That phone is ringing. Hold on, guys. Guys, I picked up that phone and nobody was there. Just dead air. This is the message they've shown me. We received part of these cards on a previous reading. And the other were gifted to me when I was going through my cards. We're healing from the darkness. We are going to become friends through this process. We need to break the disconnect. And we're breaking the disconnect by facing the dark. This is a healing path. And it's also connected to our sacral cords, our sacred cords, the red string of faith. And that is connected to the Two of Cups. Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine and our holistic healing, our holistic health, our transformations of the cup. And it's connected to the King of Cups. And his cup, is, you can see, it's turned into an ancient pitcher. With death, as we transform. And this is where the magic happens. The Four of Swords. Something comes together here in the Four of Swords. This is where the clarity is gifted. This is where the Ace of Swords is gifted. And there is the path. They've shown me this is a representation of the pathway we are taking right now. This was all activated. Much of these transformative energies from the gateway reading. The gateway, the gateway time. The 11-11 gateway. We're facing our mortality. It's time for us to face that fear as we evolve humanity. And it's connected to an experience and an opportunity. And an inner journey. An inner journey of transformation. As we connect the upper, the middle, and lower worlds, and we transform it all. Now, I'm going to get a message for Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine. But I want to first get a message as to what is in the Akashic Records. And I want to discuss the channeled messages that I received before I sat down. Divine Feminine is going within the darkness to get a wish, to get a seed. And I believe that this is connected to our abundance and our futures. Divine Masculine has gone within the darkness to free, to free himself. Eight of Swords and Ace of Pentacles, that's what I was shown. Eight of Swords for Divine Masculine and Ace of Pentacles for Divine Feminine. Ah. As well as, I was shown Faded Meeting, the Faded Meeting between the Masculine and Feminine, and it's happening in a sacred, in a sacred place. It's connected to sacred energy.
Four of Roses, views of the ego. We are getting the views of the ego, aren't we? With the King of Roses. And Archangel Gabrielle. And this is definitely connected to the three of the three of keys, the chess game. This card is all about ego. This person's only caring about their reflection. This is all the ego games, everything we came here to shift from. We're facing that and we're transforming with spirit and higher self. We're becoming whole. And it's connected to the King of Roses. Right here, we're viewing our ego. So we can transform. The King of Roses. This card shows a man holding two roses, a red and a white, demonstrating a balance of passion and purity. At his feet are the yellow roses of healing and creativity. This is the King of Love, a man who is balanced and well-rounded. When he appears, it indicates that a potential union is at hand, either in friendship, business, or romance. Whether this is a new relationship or the blossoming of an old one, he brings tender-hearted and thoughtful support. Someone who could be helpful in our personal lives, especially at home or where family is concerned. This card also lets you know that you're ready to stand up for yourself and take loving but considered action on your own behalf. It is a time of increasing love and compassion, which always starts within. This is extremely important because in this card, it discusses we're no longer tolerating the ego games. We're switch, we are switching to love. And these two cards are connected. Right there. Archangel Gabriel is the divine messenger of communication. He comes with his trumpet and scroll as well as two gentle sparrows, signifying yet peaceful expression on his chest he wears the crest of mercury the god of communication this loving angel carries the sacred words of truth into the world and brings them easily to you when this card appears it's a profound connection to this wonderful presence your power of expression is on the rise now you will have an easier time communicating with others, expressing your feelings, and even working on projects involving communication, such as publishing, counseling, teaching, mediumship, journalism, marketing, radio, or television. Now is the time for any of these endeavors, but no matter what you do, remember the powerful words. Call on Gabrielle to inspire yourself and let yourself sing out. There's our authentic tune. We are getting our authentic, our authentic tune because we know this is about humanity's healing song. And we need all of us at our authentic vibration to create this song. And it's like, it may be more than one song. It may be an album or two. This is really knowing thy darkness to connect also too with other people. Many of us are going to be we're stepping into mission work, dealing with, we need to learn how to deal with the darkness. We can't run from it. This allows us a deeper level of connecting. We all have to connect to shift and transform up. And we are doing this. And it's all connected to the game of life. There's a game being played upon this chessboard. Some of the pieces are sidelined with the bronze queen. She lies on her side on the playing field. 
The people represented by these pieces are not usually those you meet for enjoyable pastimes. This is a card of political and social conflict. You may be in store for difficult interactions in group settings. This is all about conflict in family situations, hierarchies in the corporate spaces. These are difficult situations in group settings. These sides seem to be clearly divided. Many of the people involved are really out for themselves. Deceit is present and you may not be all certain about everyone's motives or strategies. It's time for you to take an emotional or even actual step back. And that's what we've done. The mood, the more you get involved and the stronger you hold your position, the more heated the situation may become. No matter how challenging, try to maintain inner peace. Don't participate in any balances or allegiances, but don't let yourself be deceived either. Look at everything coolly and unemotionally. The people around you are serving their own agendas. Try to, to, to detach, be objective, and treat everyone involved from a deeper source of wisdom without being misled. There may come a time for you to leave or distance yourself from the situation because of circumstances. It may not be here yet. For now, let yourself be a knowing observer and watch. And I really feel like this is messages that, you know, we all needed to hear in different ways. Take the messages from this card that resonate with you. But this is all about what we're doing here. We're facing this to transform it. This is the old social structures. And they're going down. And this is just not partaking in this. In the old patterning. And getting the clarity we need and listening to our light. Now, let's get a message for Divine Masculine and Feminine. We're going to start off with Divine Feminine. I am using these cards today for a very specific reason. This is the perfect representation of what we're doing. We've gone down in the darkness to create in the void. And we are gaining the sort of clarity right now. And we know we just got our message. Mercury is directly involved in this transformation. So Divine Feminine, where we start now. The Knave of Pentacles and the Five of Pentacles. So look at that. We're facing our darkness. We're facing our lack of right there. We know that we are shifting out of the Five of Pentacles. We're shifting out of the lack of, and this is inner child healing. We face our inner child. Well, I didn't pick up those cards for a reason. Four of swords, and there it is, guys. There's a clarity right there. And that's what we're facing, our three of swords. And the devil. And there she goes. We're getting the clarity on how to heal from the Three of Swords. We're facing the devil. We're facing our darkness head on. This is our shadow selves. And we're freeing the child. That's it. We got to go. Tomorrow's Universal Child's Day. We need that child with us. And this is connected to the King of Wands. And this is that, we're going to take that wand, we're going to use that masculine energy, and we're going to transform. And it's connected to the Eight of Cups. And we know we are creating. We are creating the Ten. We need the Two. This is about the Two right now. And there's our connection. And I see we're going to achieve it because the King of Pentacles is here.
Or what is being illuminated? What is being illuminated for Divine Feminine? The Eight of Pentacles. And that flew out right on the Devil card, you guys. You see it? It flew out right on the Devil card. Direct message to the Devil card. With the Empress. And that is connected. This picture, this ancient picture, is connected to this ancient picture. The Empress, intelligence, comprehension, and beneficial influence, action, initiative, the woman, the mother, fertility, authoritative, but kind. And that's the energy we need to be into. Because we are doing something. There is life coming out of these ancient pictures. We're definitely connecting to our ancients. And this is connected to the cup's energy. This is connected to the water energies. And we're transforming with these water energies right now. The Knight of Chalices is right here. This is where things really shift. Because now we have the star and this is the healing. This is the healing that's connected to the Two of Cups. This is what's being gifted to us in the dark. It's the healing. It's the transformation. This is the gifts of the sun and the moon working together to help us transform. To create equality, to create love, to create healing, to create everything we came here to create. To shift from the dark to the light. And I need one more card. One more card here. It's connected to the Seven of Wands and the Five of Wands. So we know the Five of Wands, the Five of Cups. There is the creation of the healing of the two. We have three cups. We connect. We dump out two. We are creating equality now. We're going to connect first. Masculine, feminine, child. And we're healing. We're moving away here. And with the energies of temperance... Now that's the alchemy of what we need to remove, the darkness within the cup. What darkness do we need to remove within the cup? And it's connected to the wheel. And when we remove the darkness within the cup, the wheel turns. And we've, we've created the six of cups. Because now we've removed the darkness. We have restored purity. We've restored connection. We've restored innocence. This is the removal of of lust, of pain, of the ego games. We're, we're removing the ego games here. They come to an end. And now we shift because we're creating the 10 of cups through the six and we connect to our 10 of cups and our 10 of pentacles. And this is what we're creating. This is everything. Our Ten of Cups and Ten of Pentacles. Now we've done the work with the cup. And as you see, two cups at the bottom here are still facing down. Because these were the two cups we're working here and moving away from our sorrows. And these are sorrows from our ancients now. These are sorrows that go deep we're removing from our ancients. And that's healing from our ancient wounds. That's ancestral Karma now cleansed for our people, understanding our people. And look at that, the knave of chalices. And they showed me this card when I was shuffling. And we move away from the five. We move away from the five. And we have the sword of clarity. And this is a dark horse. We're moving away from the light.
And there's the King of Cups again, making his presence known. We've achieved it. We've achieved it. Let's see what's happening with Divine Masculine. What is Divine Masculine doing down in the dark? What else do we need to know? The King of Wands and now we're connected. Look at that. King of Wands. With the Three of Cups. The King of Wands and the Three of Cups. The Masculine is drinking from his cup as he I feel like this is a quest the masculine's drinking from his cup as a quest for equality to figure out how do I fill these two cups what do these two cups mean how do these two cups connect where did I put my deck how do I create equality from my cup The fool and there it is it's time to transform it's time to move away it's time to move away from the darkness and have a new beginning there's two flames lit here two flames are lit and I what I what I see in this card this is actually for the divine masculine the removal of there's too much energy here there's too much confusion even in this three of cups I can feel the confusion So the masculine must walk away and connect to the Ace of Wands energy. That's that's the main theme. And it, it's going up now. It's pointing up because we're going to go. We're leaving the underworld. It's time to leave Divine Masculine. It's time to play our authentic tune. You can see it here. This is leaving this space within the darkness. This is We're not enjoying this space anymore. This is a different meaning. I'm channeling here in this Three of Cups. And now we move away from our karmic patterning. This may even be karmic relationships I see within this card. Karmic relationships, divine masculine ending karmic relationships. And having a new beginning with his heart. His heart pure to play his authentic tune. Because he saw in the darkness in his cup what he needed to see. And this is what connections are no longer, no longer for him. definitely transformation time and look at that the queen of swords it's time to tell truth now and this is connecting to that feminine energy and now having the sword of the clarity and creating something new because we've moved on from the fool okay that was really weird okay here we go. Here it is. The moon and Santa Morte. This is where the reflection changes. This is now where the reflection changes. We're not reflecting back ego anymore. We're reflecting back the energies of the moon, the energies of the feminine. The energies of the dark to transform through the light. And there's a transformation here. This is where it happens. And here's the birth. The birth of what's new. And this is connected to this. And this is also connected to what's in the pictures. 
A profound transformation, a renewal, a true and proper revolution. If it is life that generates death, then death generates life. We are connected to all that surrounds us, to the people who have come before us and to those who will come from the cradle to the tomb, from the coffin to the womb, in a continual exchange and a continual regeneration, not of opposites, but of complementary elements. Santa Morte brings with it new projects, changes, cuts, and necessary abandonment of what we keep stationary and entangled. Like the past of suffocating ties, these changes, however, are not always pain-free, but can bring with them trauma, anger, violence, and loss including an immobility when we, re we refuse to take on these transmutations. Accept the changes that are being offered in front of you without fear of cutting ties and cutting yourself of your old positions, old ideas or perceptions. A mutation is imposing itself. Gazistan, my ears ringing. My ears ringing. This is the birth of the sun and the moon being connected on a whole new level. We're, I can feel the shift, the, the, how we're going to ground the heavens to the earth on a whole new level because we are making what's right in the middle world. We're making it right. But we had to go to the underworld to see what we needed to see. But now we need to see it and we need to show the universe we've seen it and we need to act that's why the wands are so present. We have this king of wands energy because we need to act and we're going to burn it away. Because that sort of clarity, it's going to turn into the wand. Let's see what's being illuminated now for divine masculine. What's being illuminated divine masculine. Oh. Ace of pentacles, the six of wands. And the Eight of Swords. And that's what they were showing me. The Eight of Swords. So. And there's the Feminine. So Ace of Pentacles. Six of Wands. And the Eight of Swords. This is a retrieval of a gift. Of a wish. Of a desire. Of something. A wish. That was made. And. On a star. A wish that was made in a wishing well. A wish that was made from childhood. And this is healing and transformative. And it's all about getting away from this space. We're not being blind anymore. We're not being blind. We're not being all tied up in our karmic patterning and karmic wounds. We're shifting. We're shifting. It's time. And this is connecting us to our best lives. Our Ten of Cups, our Ten of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles. This is walking away to create something stable with the bird's eye view. And I really feel like the masculine energy is starting to really connect to the feminine in a whole new way there. And battling back, nine of wands, battling back to heal, to transform. That's creating with the upper world. Mm, no. No, 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 no. There it is. It's the cards that flew over, guys. We have the King of Cups. There he is. Hello, King of Cups. We need this energy right now. We need this energy. This is the nurturing energy. This is connected to our gifts. This is connected to the oneness. And look at that. This is also connected to the reflection of love and what's in the cup. With the Six of Cups, now we've restored purity and innocence. We've detoxified. Because we saw what we needed to see. 
And this is the creation of new earth, our new homes. And it's connected to the Ten of Pentacles and the High Priestess. We went within the dark. We found the information we needed to find to create the golden ages, a better tomorrow, a better future. And we're making it right for our ancestors. We're making it right for ourselves. We're making it right for humanity. We're making it right with the light. This is connected to everlasting life. This is connected to mortality. This message is connected to this. Right here. The gateway as we face our darkness, our mortality, and the experience, the opportunity. And we, we shift, we transform. And now we've activated our divine blueprints at a whole new level here. This is a whole new level. And we know we're healing from the three of swords as we move away with the six. All right. See what's being activated. Oh, and on the bottom of the deck here, we have the Seven of Pentacles. And here underneath, we have the Seven of Pentacles too. No, not here. Right here. So underneath the King of Pentacles here, there's the Seven of Pentacles. And strength. Look at that strength. That's beautiful. That is a beautiful image with the sword of clarity. There's the sword of clarity and the sword of the light. That's transformation, baby. It's connected to judgment. And there it is. We're freeing ourselves. We're freeing ourselves from the devil energies. We're showing the universe what we're made of. Because we're activating. No more fear, guys. No more fear. We don't, need, we don't need fear. We need the light. We need faith. What's being activated? What's being activated? Stand still and magic. And look at that. It's the number 33. And there's the child. The essence. When stand still appears, it is a symbol of pausing. The act of observation and breathing space. It represents the benefits of temporary non-action. As well as what happens when one is stuck. The invitation. When things seem to stall or stagnate, or when you feel stuck, this symbol appears as a reminder that constant action isn't going to get you where you want to go. Perhaps it's a time to gather more information or just wait until the universe makes the next move. No matter what, this moment is beautiful and it's a gift orchestrated in your favor. Enjoy it. Let the universe bring all the parts together for the highest good. Go and play, recharge, and take the focus off whatever has stalled. Life will get busy again for you sooner than you think. The medicine. Time to get out of analysis paralysis. Stand still invites you to turn within, breathe, and recognize this is the condition at the moment. It allows you the opportunity to bear witness to whatever is going on before the next moment resumes. It is also an opportunity to abort a project, to exit before damage. It also may be a time to relieve you of unnecessary burdens that took on without you even considering which one. This is all about when we take on burdens that were not even our own, or we take on a burden we didn't realize it was gonna be a burden. We remove our distractions. It's all about making our next move when we're relaxed and grounded and detached. Well, we're not there yet and we're observing. We don't want to get lost in the ego games. We're observing. We don't want to get lost in the darkness. We're observing. We don't want to get lost in whatever sickness 
or pain or hurt or whatever you're being shown right now because what we're being shown is in order to take the sword and cut it away when something doesn't go the way you think it should remember the following what is yours cannot be taken away and that's straight truth what's yours cannot be taken away you know i so badly keep wanting to rate my karmic partner a letter a message phone him but i'm like my my higher self keeps saying what's meant for you is meant for you and this is not obviously what's meant for you what are you doing nicole this is old patterning this is old patterning you need to let go of these wounds and i'm seeing it the sword of clarity is in my hand as well as what i have done within my life to create sickness and seeing what my ancestors my loved ones have done to create sickness when they're within their life how they suffered and why I came here to rise and do what I need to do. And many of you that join me here are going through that same thing. And this reading, if this reading resonates with you, we're rising up. We're not being afraid anymore. And we're definitely not being afraid of our true selves. The essence, the symbol represents the infinite intelligence of great spirit that makes up the fundamental fabric of the universe. We experience the evidence of this magic through synchronicity or meaningful coincidence. The invitation. When the magic appears, you're invited to see the world through the eyes of wonder and awe, taking on the innocence of a child who knows that all things are possible infinite potential creates the great mind and you are being invited to call in and recognize the dance in synchronistic events signs symbols and omens given to you through the oracle of the ordinary world this is a sign that spirit is reminding you that you co-create your world in a sacred partnership your part is to dream to intend and to watch for the signs and show you what your next action is to take. Right now it appears that you are on the right track to make your dreams come true. Great Spirit is listening and acting on your behalf. Pay attention, magic gives birth to miracles. And that's what's happening. Magic is paying, it's about to create miracles. If we allow it to. And it is connected to this, where are you? This energy, that's what's happening. We need to slow down right now and stop because we're being shown. We're being shown this. This is being allowed to be created within this space. And you can see we're going to move from the dark and we're going to be connected to a space of passions, peace and heart centered truths. But still within the dark, we're retrieving those pieces and they're all connected. And this is all connected to the red string of faith. Our sacred cords. The medicine. Have you forgotten that you live in a world that is infused with magic? Perhaps you've become cynical and think you have to create your life all by yourself with no help from others. It's time to remember your relationship to source. For you are part of the story of the world. A living spark of spirit living on earth for this short time. As you are a being of light. If you look back over your life, you will find many instances in which your actions alone were not the cause or out of the blue coincidences that led you to new relationships, job, or other important moments on your journey. So how do you stay in this awareness? The answer is simple. If you can be as a little child and cultivate that wondrous curiosity, you will see the magic again and be amazed. Remember, the magic is real and in everything. And that's truth. We need to create with our magic now. And we know these faded meetings that have forever changed our lives. Being a twin flame. 
that connection changes our lives. And many of the other things that are dropped along our path, and this is all about the energy of things we never thought we'd do. We know the message of God, destiny. The road to our destiny is on a path we tried to avoid, the path we were not taking, but we needed to see what we needed to see. And we are freeing that child at a whole new level. This is a whole new level. Let's see what good is coming from the situation. And this deck will also be present at the reading for the child. What good is coming of this situation? What good? The queen of fire. And there it is. We know we need the king of fire. But now it's time for the queen. This is connected to now. Counterpart energies. We need the king and queen to come together. This is freaking beautiful. This is solar plexus healing. Connected to the sacral chakra and the root. Everything we've talked about and discussed. And there, you know, we got the king of wands there. See what it's connected to. The two of fire are manifestations. With the messenger of fire. This is a lot of fire energies. The shaman of foresight. This is what's being activated here. The shamans are of ancient times, the walkers between worlds who journeyed into realm of spirit. They know the ways we must travel, both on our life's journey and on the paths we follow when seeking answers. Working with the shaman's oracle brings us to the companionship of these wise souls whose courage guided our ancestors and does the same for us today. This is our, our gift we're being given right now. I am the shaman of foresight. I travel the road before you, bringing back reports of what lies ahead. I can teach you to see beyond the moment, to live in such a way that whatever new task you undertake, you are always ready to adjust accordingly. I prepare the way ahead, ensuring that whatever your journey leads, you will enter into a new moment with clear intent and true perception. And that's what we're doing. And when we face our darkness, it's incredible. Like, we fear so many things we never, like, we don't fear the things we used to fear. We're able to, to take on that dolphin energy and it takes on a whole new meaning. Whereas before, we may have taken it. We may have taken being thrown into the ego games and being back in that three of swords energy but we're not doing that because we're facing our fears and it tr it's going to transform us in a whole new way so that all these things that were in our universe before that seem scary they're no longer scary we have the 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 emperor and empress energies now we've connected the masculine and feminine we're whole the shaman of foresight Foresight enables us to find the way toward our own destiny. It takes us safely past obstacles or traps beyond stormy seas into calmer waters. For our ancestors, the ability to imagine what might happen next would often have meant the difference between life and death. In our own lives, foresight means being prepared for every eventuality. 
The Shaman of Foresight helps us to work on our expectations so that we are ready for whatever life throws at us. The image on this card shows the handprint enclosed in a cage. Foresight shows us how we may avoid such captivity in the first place. Transcending the moment, looking the head ahead, interpreting signs, acting, acting intelligently, listening to instincts, dreams, and visions. That's what we're doing. And this, we've been given a gift. Now, we've been given a gift to see how we no longer, what we no longer want to create. But we need to stop creating it so we can leave and get back to the middle world. This has to do with the cave. This has to do with our last reading in the cave. Spirit of nurture and shaman of courage. We need to have courage. And we're, this is about nurturing energy. This is about saving the queen. This is literally about saving the queen. Okay, guys, I'm going to go get the book. I want to read the queen. Give me one sec. Queen of fire, creative collaborations, soul connections, passion inspired by spirit, artist. I am capable of strong friendships that inspire me and encourage me to express myself in my own way. I co-create with others dedicated to a vision of achieving the highest good of all. How might I join in the dance of co-creation, letting spirit flow through me and inspire me to express my passions? And that's what we're doing. That's the gift of the darkness. We're being inspired. And we need to be in the energy of wonder within the moment, awe of the magic we're creating with. Because that is going to, that's how we're flying out of here. That's how we're, we're rising up. We need to be in the energy of what we're creating now. We got to let go of the darkness, guys. We need to let go of the darkness and hold on tight to the light and create with that light. And right now we're in a time of inaction. We're just observing what's going on around us. So when that time comes, we're going to take that sort of clarity. It's going to be lit with the wand's energy and whoosh. We're going to light it all up and we're going up. This is beautiful. And that's why the fire is so present here. That's why we have the two of fire and the messenger of fire. And we will be discussing these cards on the next reading. Because right here is the Two of Wands as well. So we now have the Two of Wands and the Two of Wands. It's happening. And look at this. There's the lovers. There's the lovers right there. It's right there. We're manifesting our connection. We're manifesting love. This is everything. This is why we came here to see what we needed to see. So we can hold on to that dream cloud. We can hold on to it and we can create with it and we can allow it now to manifest. This is beautiful. I just want to see. We have the five of scrolls, the eight of forces, and the six of scrolls. And it's connected to this card. And this, this is what's happening here. I would have never noticed if I didn't get up to go and get the book. But I was called when I was taking that time to go and get the book. Freaking falling over the camera. Regrouping myself. And then, you know what? I was like, you know what? I never spend the time to check the cards. I always do it afterwards. I want to do it now. And it's... It's really starting to make sense because we're the queen's fallen over. We are rescuing the queen here. That's what we're doing. We're rescuing the queen 
five of scrolls. We're we're ending we're ending the disconnects. And we're doing that through the eight of forces. Look at that energy. And it has to do with the six of scrolls. It's time. It's literally time here. We're leaving the void. Time's run out. We're leaving the void now. It's time to go. And this is connected to our will, wisdom, and mind. This is fire and water coming together for creation. Masculine and feminine coming together for creation. This has to do with connection. It's connected to, to everything that's going on here that we've discussed. With Uriel and the Sphinx and caught in the ruins. We're caught in the ruins right now. But we're connecting to ancient wisdom because this is this is how we're shifting out of this space here. It's time. It's time. Uriel and the Sphinx. The Archangel Uriel stands before the Sphinx under a full moon. The Sphinx is usually shown with the body of a lion, indicating strength and the head of a king, showing authority and intelligence. But more than that, the Sphinx represents the enigmatic and inscrutable, the silent holder of truth and the ancient mysteries of the world. Here, the Archangel Uriel connects and confers with his great source of mystery, showing us that it's time for us, for you, to do the most important and possibly the most difficult work in your life. The digging and the inner discovery that takes you to your deepest self and your deepest power. Even the great Sphinx had to be dug out many times from the blowing desert sands that buried it up to its neck. And you must dig diligently too. You may have to chip away at the rock-like substance, substance of your old beliefs and histories so that you can get to the truth inside. But don't worry, you have begun already. And you've made considerable inroads. There's also someone here to help you. Uriel, whose name means fire of God. You can work directly in your meditations with this archangel for self-understanding, transformation, and guidance. Also be on the lookout for someone in your daily life whom Uriel has sent. This could be a teacher, a mentor, or even a new friend who shares a kinship with you about this inner quest. If it's a relationship of great value that connects and comes in a time of profound power, don't, don't diminish the importance of this phase. It is the work that leads you to your initiation and to your higher power. This is the work that's leading us to our initiation, to our higher power. It's all about this. We're, this is connected to the reading for the child tomorrow. We're going to discuss that there. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I know these transformations, they are intense. This is intense. We're cutting away the darkness at a whole new level. I am sending you so many healing vibes in this transformative time. I want to thank you guys for joining me here. I'll see you at that child reading. Take care.